All right, I just want to do a video showing, for example, the Catholic origins of these counterfeit charismatic gifts. Because these, this charismatic Pentecostal movement, they trace their roots right back to Rome. Because you look at the history of these false charismatic miracles, these, these lying signs and wonders, they go all throughout the Roman Catholic Church history. You, you dig through it, you'll find there's tons of examples of Roman Catholic saints and church fathers of Roman Catholicism doing these lying signs and false counterfeit miracles. So, and here's one such example. Her name is uh, Hildegard of Bingen. She was a, a German nun. This is on wayoflife.org. They have a report on this, and I'll link it in the description. It says, uh, it says, Hilde, it says Hilden, Hildegard, I guess I say her name, I'm good at saying some of these German names. Hildegard of Bingen was a German nun of the, Bened uh, of the Benedictine order. She was the head of two abbeys and was very influential th through her writings. The date of her canonization of a saint is not known, but Pope John, uh, Pope John can't read Roman numerals, uh, just not good at that, uh, mentioned her feast day in, in 1324, and she's included in a Baroness 16th century Roman martyrology. Since 1979, her works have enjoyed a revival through the, the, the contemplative movement. She is promoted by Richard Foster, who includes an entire chapter uh, by her in his book, Spiritual Classics. She is also promoted by Matthew Fox, a New Age priest who was ordained as an Episcopalian after being forced out of the Catholic priesthood. So she is lifted up by this charismatic movement. Okay, well, let's see about these, these uh, lying signs and wonders that this Catholic saint did. Uh, Hilde, Hildegard is alleged to have had visions for, from the age of three to the end of her life. She claimed that by means of the visions, she gained the ability to understand without any human teaching the writings of the prophets, the evangelists, and of the other holy men of those certain philosophers. And that's from Sabina, Sabina uh, Flangen, uh, Hild, 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 Hildegard, I can't say these German names, Hildegard of Bingen, page uh, 43. At age 47, she supposedly received the command from God to write down the visions, and for the next 10 years, she did so with the help of various secretaries, including a monk named Volmar. Sounds like Voldemort from uh, Harry Potter, but I mean, they're all just a bunch, I mean, the Roman Catholic Church is all just a bunch of witchcraft, and uh, full of witchcraft, it's just a bunch of witches anyway, so really the, the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and wiz Wizardry is really no different than any Catholic uh, abbey or Catholic monastery, it's all the same thing. Really, when you really get down to the fact of the matter. Uh, the popes and the priests were the head of the, the witchcraft and the mystery religions during the Dark Ages. But anyway, she was uh, says she was encouraged in this task by Bernard of Clairvaux, I think that's how you say that, who influenced the pope to approve of her vision. She called them the secret mysteries of God. Hmm. Sure. Well, the God of this world, yeah, definitely. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 talks about Satan being the God of this world. So yeah, definitely is the mysteries of God, the God of this world. That's, that's the mysteries of the God that she's referring to. Her visions, it says, her visions are contained in three books, uh, Skivas, Know the Ways, Liber Vita Mitrorium, again, I, I can't pronounce some of this stuff, it just, I'm just not good at that, and Liber uh, Dino Orium, uh, it's some, some Latin word, uh, it says, Hildegard uh, said that while the vision, she lost all bodily sensation. She writes, quote, at a later time, I saw a mysterious and wonderful vision, so that my inmost core was convulsed and I lost all bodily sensation as my knowledge was altered to another mode unknown to myself. That was uh, in her writing page. It says, Flan Flanagan, Hildegard of Vingen, page 141. She allegedly saw images of each person of the Godhead, which the Bible says is impossible. Yeah, exactly. John chapter 1, verse 18. John chapter 4, verse 46. Uh, there's also Colossians 1, 13 to 15. So many scriptures you can't see. Uh, God the Father is invisible. And also Exodus chapter 33, I believe it's verse, or sorry, Exodus chapter 32, I believe it is. Don't have the, this in my notes, but in Exodus chapter 32, I believe it's verse 30 down to verse 33, uh, Moses was not able to see the face of God without dying. So God actually had to cover his face, walk by, and even when Moses saw the back of God, his, his face shone so brightly that he had to put a veil on his face. You can't see God's face, but some of these Catholic saints are able to paint pictures of God the Father, even though Colossians 1, 13 and 15 clearly says that the God the Father is invisible. You know, it's insane. But again, once again, it's Catholic tradition overriding the, the word of God. But it says here, she said that God told her that men should confess their sins to the ear of a priest, uh, a regular confession, and the priest is the judge in the place of my son. Book of Life, Merits uh, 1, Chapter 79. 
Yeah, sure. She saw the Roman Catholic Church covered with the blood of Christ, even though it denies his gospel of grace, perpetually offers Christ anew on its altars, worships him in a piece of bread, and exalts Mary at least as highly as Christ. She claimed that marriage was a result of man's fall, whereas the Bible says that marriage was instituted by God before the fall. Genesis chapter 2, verse 20 to 25. God had instructed, instructed man and woman to be fruitful and multiply before the fall. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 and 28. And regarding Mary as well, I'd argue that the Catholic Church puts her above Jesus Christ, because there's examples where they have Mary on the cross and even Mary on God's throne. So, I mean, don't tell me they don't worship her as a goddess. The way they just, just, just ooh and awe over her, it's blatantly worship. Okay, if you're bowing down before statues and praying to her, that is worship. You can you can deny it all you want, but by scriptural standards, that is that is idolatry. So anyway, continuing on, she claimed that God told her that the forbidden fruit was an apple. Uh, that was in Skiva's one vision, uh, vision two, chapter thirteen. In fact, it was a fruit of a unique tree called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Genesis chapter two, verse sixteen to seventeen. Yet there's no scriptural evidence that it was an apple. Not one, not, not one verse proving that. She falsely claimed that the end of history was at hand in her day, like some of the Roman Catholic mystics. Hildeg Hildegard uh, included the female element in her understanding of God. Christian Mystics, page 82. She was deeply committed to devotion to Mary and dedicated many songs to her, including one entitled Praise for the Mother. Oh, no, they don't worship Mary, even though they're calling her praise for the, you know, it's the same mother goddess worship. We don't worship her, even though we're going to sing praises to her. You know, uh, that's, that's what you call worship. And it says going on, uh, Hildegard's visions describe purgatory, even though there's no such teaching in scripture. In fact, scripture says that sins are purged fully and only by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah, 1 John chapter 1, verse 7 to 9, Acts chapter 13, verse 30 to 39, Colossians 1, or sorry, Colossians 2, verse 14, and Colossians chapter, sorry, Titus chapter 2, verse 13 to 14, and Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 to 14. And many others too talk about how it's Jesus Christ, the blood of Christ, that washes away all your sins, not purgatory. But it says, uh, sprinkling uh, marsh, punishing spirits and fiery thorns, spikes, toads, horrible worms, vipers, and scorpions. So this is supposedly what she's seeing in this vision of purgatory she has. Uh, going on, Hildegard believed that souls could be rescued from purgatory through the, rec the recitation of psalms for the dead, almsgiving prayers, and other holy works. She believed that man is one with the universe. Uh, so she, sa she says here, quote, O man, look to man, for man has the heavens and the earth and other created things within him. He is one, and all things are hidden within him. And that was a cause at, I, I'm, I'm can't pronounce that. Uh, that was that was one of her writings, basically. So she's basically teaching this new age type of, of pantheistic one with the universe. You know, nature is God type of stuff. Yeah, and this is this is the roots of this charismatic movement. Okay, and she's just one example, by the way. There's many other others of these Roman Catholic, including the Jesuit founder, the founder of the Jesuit order, uh, Ignatius Ignatius of Loyola, is what they call him. Uh, he 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 did signs and wonders too, lying signs and wonders. This charismatic movement traces directly back to the Roman Catholic Church, to the Jesuit order. This charismatic movement, and, and that's why it's not surprising so many of these charismatics are going back home to Rome and meeting with the Pope. Why? Well, was it all, they're all that same Antichrist spirit when you get down to the fact of the matter. So don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.